Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this timeline in Word, how to save it as a picture, and what the distinct advantage is with saving it as an image. So I've just started with a default document, and the first thing I need to do is change the orientation because we're going to do a landscape timeline. So we go up to layout, go up to orientation, and go to landscape. I'm just going to zoom in. And the first thing we want to do is introduce all of our graphics, customize them fully before we then start to copy and paste them for all the different elements. So the first thing we're going to do is to insert shape, click on the drop down, and I'm going to go to this shape here, which is a curved edge rectangle. I'm just going to click and drag out a curved edge rectangle. Now, because we're going to do an awful lot of copying and pasting just to make life easier and quicker, it's good to customize whatever you insert first, but then before copying and pasting, make sure you're absolutely happy with it. You can go back and change it, but before we do the big copying and pasting, it's really important you get this bit right. So when we've inserted this shape, it comes with a borderline and a fill color. So in order to customize that, if you just click on it, we can do some quick customizations up here, but we do need to open a bigger menu for other things. So if you're on shape format here, go all the way along to this format shape icon here and just click. And what you'll end up with is this menu here. And for the colors, it's important you're on the bucket icon here. So the fill refers to the color. So we click on the drop down. We can see all of our colors. Apologies, you can't see all of mine at the moment. It's just how my screen's laid out. I also have some recent colors that I've put in at the bottom here. If you can't find the color of your choice, go to more colors. You've got a color wheel here, which if you move this cursor around, it will pick a color of your choice. You can also use the brightness and darkness slider here and your color of choice will come up in this square here and then just click OK. So I'm going to go to color. I'm going to pick my first color and I'm going to go to line, which is the border line around that rectangle and just select no line. And then once I'm happy, I can adjust the sizes in a minute, but once I'm happy with that, I can click and drag out another one for the box at the bottom. So deselect them both, reselect this one, and then just click and drag out a box at the bottom. Now it's quite important that the box at the bottom is wider than this box here, just for how they will lay out in the end. So we'll put it to about that wide there, and then we'll put it to around about here. Now roughly get the distance you want away from each other, because there's going to be another one here where the box will actually be here. So it will be, so it will be staggered. So there'll be another box here, another box down here, etc., etc. So we'll put this box roughly about here. We'll align them all in a second. And then we're just going to insert another rectangle insert. In fact, what we could do is just copy and paste this one. Now you can copy and paste the normal way, Command or Control C, Command or Control V, or select your shape, hold down your Alt or Option key, click and drag. Deselect it, reselect just the one, and then we're going to create this line and make sure it stretches between the two. Perfect. Now, so that all of this is lined up, we'll select all of it. So hold down your command or control key on your keyboard and click on all three elements. Go to shape format, go to align, and then align to center. That will align everything up to the center there. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do is to put some text in. Now, if you go to insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box, and then click and drag out a text box. Now, as you can see, all text boxes will be inserted with a black border and a white background. So we're going to get rid of both of those. So select the text box, go up to shape format, and then go to shape outline, select no outline, shape fill, no fill. And then in here, we're going to put some text. So I'm just going to paste in some text. You can see my text is too big. So I'm going to select the text by clicking anywhere in the text. You see my cursor's there. Command or Control A to select everything. Go to the Home tab. And then I'm going to use this section here to customize my text. So I'm going to use the Decrease Font Size tool here just to click on it and decrease that font size. I'm also going to center my text using the center text icon here. 
And then I can manipulate this square or rectangle, if you like, to adjust how my text will look inside my graphics box. Now, this is the reason that I use a text box over the top of a graphic. I don't just insert a text box, because what you can do is you can insert this text box, go over to uh, shape options here, and then I can just fill my text box with a color. But the trouble is, is that it doesn't give you all the options of the layout, the margins, where it sits. It's a very quick and simple way to do it, but it doesn't give you the customization options that we have with shapes. So I'm just going to go back one step, Command or Control Z, and then I'm just going to increase the size of this text just a little bit. There we go. In fact, yes, I'll take that to 10. And what I will do is I'm going to put a title in, so I'm just going to nudge that down and title of box. Then I'm just going to select that and put a bold onto that text and I'm going to put a space between it. You can see my text has run off the end a little bit. So all I need to do is click on the rectangle and just pull the rectangle down a little bit. To center the text and your rectangle, select them both again by holding down the command or control key. Go to shape format, align, you can go to align to center again. And you can also go to align to middle and that will perfectly line up those two elements. Now we're going to put the text in the top here. In fact, let's turn this text white again, trying to make sure we do everything we want to before copying and pasting. Let's turn that text white by using the font color icon here. And then what we're going to do is copy and paste this text box. The reason we're going to do that is because we don't have to take the borders out, the background out, the change the text, everything else, it's all done for me. So hold down the Alt or Option key and then click and drag. You can't see the text, let's put it over here. Again, just click inside so your cursor's inside. Command or Control A and then I'm just going to type 2022 just for our timeline. There we go. And once again, I am going to just customize this text. So the first thing I need to do, you can see that the 2022 is higher up in this text box and there's a greater margin below. But if we pull this up, you can see, again, it doesn't quite fit. There's a higher margin or a bigger margin at the top than there is at the bottom. So what we can do is select it, go to shape format, go over to the menu bar here, go to text options, go to this icon here, where it says vertical alignment, click on the drop down and select middle. And that will mean that the text is in the middle of this box rather than at the top. I'm just going to select all the text. I'm going to change the font to DIN and I'm going to increase the size of it. I'm going to make it quite big. There we go. And again, select the text box, hold down the command or control key, Click on the rectangle behind if you can. If you can't, do it the other way around. Click on the rectangle and then click on the text. Shape format, align, line to center and align to middle. Now you can see, despite the fact that we've aligned that to the middle, there's a bigger margin at the top than there is at the bottom. So all we have to do is use our arrow keys just to move that up. If it jumps like that, you can use your control key along with your command or control key and just hit the arrow key and that will reduce the increments in which it moves. Now, before we can copy and paste this, you need to make absolutely sure that you're completely happy with the layout of it. Don't worry too much about the color because we're going to change the color. But you need to be happy with the layout, the size of the box, everything, because we're going to co copy and paste. And if you copy and paste these and you get it wrong, you've got to go back and redo it all and then recopy and paste it again. So it's a real pain. So I'm just trying to save you time and effort. So we're going to select all the elements now. So select the box, holding down that command or control key, select the line, the text and the box behind. Sometimes it goes a bit funny to, and you have to go and do it all again. Word is not Photoshop. So select all the elements. Once you've done that, go to shape format and go along to this icon that says group. Click on the drop down and select group. Now it's all one complete element, which is brilliant because all we need to do now is go ahead and copy and paste it. Again, I'm going to select it, hold down my Alt key, click and drag. Now if I click and drag again, it's going to copy two of them. 
which is fine. If you want two, then that's absolutely fine. Let's see how that goes with how much space we've got. You may need to make this all smaller because obviously it depends on how many timeline elements you need. So with this one, I'm going to have six, but I'm going to use this one to create the smaller ones that go in between. So let's ungroup this one, select it, go to group, ungroup, and then all I'm going to do is select the line and I'm going to move that line up to there. And then I'm going to select the box and the rectangle, again, holding down the Alt or, sorry, the Command or Control key. And then again, we're going to align them all, so select everything. And go to align, align to center, and again group. And then once it's selected, hold down the Alt key, just click and drag. Again, deselect if you only want one, select it and copy and paste it. Now you can see at the moment these boxes are hitting each other. That's absolutely fine. We can all move them all over and we can space them out. This is why this is so versatile. So now the key is to just space out the elements where you want them. You might want them more spaced out, less spaced out. You want them right, might want them really close together like this. It's absolutely fine. Just for this demonstration, I'm just going to move them round about. You don't have to be accurate because we're going to align them all in a second. So once you're happy with them, select them all, holding down the command or control key. And then go to align and then go to distribute horizontally. Now that should ensure that there is an equal gap between each of these elements. And then just reselect them all, go to align and then align to the top. So again, they're all now perfectly aligned. So now it's really about customization. So let's say, for example, in this one, let's go and go to group and select ungroup. And we want a little less text in here, or you just want to rewrite the text. Obviously, you're going to want something different in there. Let's delete that. And you've only got a small amount of text in here. Let's just reduce the size of that box. Reduce the size of that box. It's quite important you don't increase or decrease the width of the box. I mean, you can if you want to, but it just gives that element of consistency if the boxes are the same width, but obviously you can play around with the height. So I'm going to go to about there. I'm going to hold down my command or control key. I'm going to select the text. Again, back up to align, lots of aligning, align to center, align to middle, just ensuring that is perfectly lined up. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and change the color. So I can select the box at the top, go to Shape Fill, and let's choose this color here. Again, because it's been selected, the color is already there, so you don't have to click on the drop down again. You can just click on the bucket, and it will change it to that orange color. And again, this one, perfect. And again, you can go ahead and do exactly the same with all of these boxes, fully customize them for what you want. And then I'm going to speed up the video and then I'm going to come back in. I'm going to do the title and the taglines at the top. I'm going to show you how to group it all together and align the whole thing. OK, so once you've finished completely customizing everything, we're going to group it all together. So it's a bit of a faff, but we're going to do it individually so that if you get halfway down and it, you miss something or it deselects it all, it's really irritating. So again, we're going to group everything together like this. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to select everything in each element. So holding down my command or control key, just group everything like this, go back up to group and select group. So I'm going to do that all, all of it now. Okay, so now they're all grouped. Again, holding down the command or control key. I'm just going to, well, it doesn't want to play ball. I'm just going to select them all and then go back to shape format, group, and then select group. And now it's one complete group, which is fantastic because you can then go up to align and then align the whole thing to the center, which is perfect. So once you've done that, we can then insert a title. So again, insert text box, draw text box, click and draw a text box. Now you might be wondering, well, why don't you just center the text and type a title in there? Well, you absolutely can do. But once again, as I've always said in all of my tutorials, text boxes are a lot more flexible. 
You can customize them, you can move them any way you want to, you can change the text, all the rest of it. So let me just demonstrate what I mean. So let's put in our title, title of timeline. I'm going to adjust the text to home. I'm going to change this to this font here, increase the font size, put some bold on it. There we go. And again, you can adjust all of this. I'm going to center it as well using this icon. There we go. I'll center it in the page in a minute. Again, I've got this white. If I go over here, you see I've got a white background and a black border again. So I'm going to get rid of both of those. Go to shape format, shape outline, no outline, shape fill, no fill. And then you can see it's completely transparent. So if you've done that, I'm going to copy and paste it again. I'm going to go into this box here. I'm going to copy out some text, just paste that in, and then go to home, reduce the size of the text, change the font to match the title. And again, the great thing about this is that you can move it any way you like, and you can extend it out if you want the words at the bottom here to be on the top, or you can squash it so that the words can fit where the title is. And this is what's so great about having text boxes. So once you're happy with where it lies in conjunction with the title, select them both, holding down the command or control key, again, shape format, align, align to center. So those two are completely aligned. So now you group them together, and now you've got them in one element. And then again, align, align to center. And there they are perfectly aligned. So once you've got everything on your page, you can now decide, well, does that look right or do I need to move something? So this here is a little bit too high for me, so I'm just going to use my arrow key, move it down a bit. And then I can move the title down a bit to fit perfectly on my page. Now, if you did want to save this and then use it somewhere else, you can save everything as an image. So if I was to select this element here, and again, hold down my command or control key, select them both, and then group the whole lot together. You can see we've now got one complete element. Let's align it to the center again. What you can do is right click, go down to save as picture. So I'm gonna save this to my de desktop, just press save. And then if I just open up another page, so insert, let's go to page break. So I've got my original down here. If I go up here and click insert picture, picture from file, then I go to desktop, picture one, insert. Then I've got my infographic here. Now I can't move it at the moment, but if you go to wrap text, in front of text, then I can move it anywhere I want. Now, there's an advantage to doing this. If I go down to here and I click on my infographic here, if I reduce the size of it, look what happens. Look at all the text. Whereas if I go back, Command or Control Z, if I click on this one, which is now an image, it's a JPEG, and I reduce the size of it, look what happens. It maintains all my information perfectly. I can have it as big or as small as I want to. I can move it anywhere. And then I can, as you do with many JPEGs, you can use it online or you can use it for social media or anything like that so it's really handy to know that you can export this as an image so i hope that's helped you today if it has please like and subscribe and have a great day